I think we're here. Hopefully, hopefully I'm in the right place and you guys are finding me. I gave it just a moment. I tagged everyone um, that's in the group. So hopefully you have found the live stream. You've refreshed all that fun stuff. So I see we've got six people so far watching, which is fantastic. Um, there is quite a bit of a delay between what I'm doing and what's showing up on Facebook. So that's always fun as well. So welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here with me today for our Adventurous Sky online workshop. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. So if you've been here with me before, you kind of know what's going on. But if you have not joined me before for an online workshop, let me just kind of take you through what we're going to do, right? So we have people joining us from all over, which I think is super exciting, right? What a great way to gather, right? Uh, I love being able to do this um, online because then I can I can talk to more of you, right? And you can talk to me. Um, so today what we're going to do is the whole point is to share my love of joy, just love and joy of paper crafting, right? I love paper crafting and specifically with Stampin' Up! products. So um, why do I love it? It's relaxing. It's fun. You get your natural endorphins shooting off and, and you know, the best part or my favorite part is, is being able to share that joy with others like you or by sending a handmade card in the mail, right? Who doesn't love to get a handmade card in the mail? I know I do. Yes. Best surprise ever when that happens. So if you don't know anything about me, my name is Wendy Lee. Um, you can find me on my website at creativelyyours.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S., um, I've been a demonstrator for a little over 20 years, and I went full-time in November of 2019. So that is not a typical thing um, of a Stampin' Up! demonstrator to be doing this as their full-time gig, but I do, right? Um, and there are there are several of us out there, but it is not a typical thing. Uh, I am married. I've been married for, it seems like forever. It's not forever, right? Uh, let's see, 30, I'm going to get it wrong. 32, 33 years, it'll be, yeah, we just had 33, 33, I think so. <laughs> My husband, Mike, is wonderful. He's super supportive, um, which is part of the reason I get to do what I do. I have two grown children that I am super proud of. My son, Chase, is in the military, so he is currently stationed in Hawaii. So yay, guess where I'm going for Christmas? Yay! Uh, and he's married and has an adorable three-year-old. And then my daughter, is Reagan, is uh, married with a seven-year-old, Arlie. I love Arlie, too. Um, and she is working, uh, she lives about an hour and a half away, which is great. Uh, so she works for Purina, making pet food. So kind of fun stuff, right? Um, so what's the purpose of a workshop or what's typical of a workshop? So typically you would have a host of a workshop and you would invite your friends. I would come in and teach the paper crafting with the best products, right? Stamp it up. And then the host would keep all the samples I make and they would earn host rewards on the orders that were placed. So for today's workshop, I'm the host and the presenter, right? So I'm giving back all the host rewards in the form of my order special. So I've already posted links to the catalog. Um, so if you don't have a hard copy, uh, you can find that in this group when you scroll through the feed. Um, so if you've got a hard copy, get your catalog, get a sticky note, a notepad, or you can pull up the online catalog and you might wanna make notes as you go along. Um, the host code is already posted. Um, and I'm happy to help anybody place an order if they need help with that. So let me kind of tell you what the special is. I do have a host code attached to this to be able to earn the rewards. So any order that you place uh, with this event host code will get a, of course, a hand stamp card in the mail from me. And you'll also get the PDF tutorial for the projects we're making today. If your order reaches $50 or more, you're going to get the cut packets. I'm going to send you one of these, right? Uh, so you'll get this in the mail along with, of course, the card and the PDF tutorial that you'll be able to download and print as needed, right? Uh, if you do need a catalog, let me know and I can drop one of those in the mail to you as well. Okay, should we switch over and get to our fun? 
I think we should, right? All right, let me flip over my camera. Now, I'm gonna pre-warn you. My camera has a mind of its own and some days it does some really crazy stuff, right? Um, it will zoom in and out or go all over the place and who knows? I'm hoping that today it's gonna behave as we do our workshop, right? Um, excuse me, need a little bit of a drink. Let me turn on the lights, that might help. There we go. And let me kind of swing this around so we can see a little bit better, hopefully, or I can see a little bit better. I don't know if it'll make a big difference for you, but it will for me and being able to get to all the goodies, right? All right, so what are we doing today? We are doing the Adventurous Sky Bundle is our featured stamp and die bundle. I love it. Uh, this is one of, oh, here goes the camera. This is one of the many, I'm gonna try to do this and see if I, that will help with it. Um, this is one of the many stamp and die bundles that is currently marked on sale. So. Whenever you purchase a bundle together, let's see if I can get this camera to behave. Oh, I hate it when it does this. Um, come on. There we go. There we go. I hope it doesn't do this the whole time. It's going to make me batty. Hopefully I've got it straightened out. I think it reads um, some other things. So I'm going to see if I can cover that up. So it doesn't read the movement of my my iPad, right? Where I'm trying to see comments. Um, so anyway, we we have a stamp and die bundle sale going on right now through the end of June. So just a few more days, Sunday, right? Will be the last day to take advantage. And this is one of many stamp and die bundles that you can get an additional 10% off. So you guys know why it zoomed in, I don't know. Uh, you guys know that bundles are already 10% off, but uh, this gives you an additional 10% off, which I think is great. So we're gonna use this today. We are using products from the Take to the Sky product suite here, which this is fun. I love this. Makes great masculine cards. Love the paper. Um, we're not going to use these embellishments. I'm pulling in the neutral sequence, which I just realized I did not grab. So let me grab those while we're talking here. And hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. I have my ear pods in, but sometimes I'm noticing they don't always keep the volume the same as I move around the room. So I will try to speak up and make sure we don't have problems with that as well. Uh, and let's see, I set up a tape runner. It's almost empty. I might get a couple swipes out of it. So I've got an extra tape runner as well I'm grabbing. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, I did wanna mention, the Take to the Sky product suite is um, the one that we are featuring in this month's all-star video class tutorial bundle. So I'm actually in a uh, group of demonstrators, uh, very talented ladies that I'm excited to be part of. And uh, so we do a video class tutorial bundle every single month featuring a different product suite in our catalog. So the June one is the Take to Your Sky. So when your order hits $50 or greater, you're also going to get that. So you're going to get even more product project inspiration. So these are the four projects we're making today. I am going to start off with this one right here. So the cards are pretty fast and easy. I like that. Um, so they're really easy to make a big stack of them if, if you needed to, right? All right. I am not really seeing comments. So if you guys are saying things to me, Definitely let me know. I'm happy. To, I'm, I'm excited that you're here. I really am excited that you're here. So let's kind of start off. Let's get our Knight of Navy card base. So this is just a half a sheet of cardstock. So this is um, five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to fold it in half. I'm doing a top fold card with this one today. And we're going to use our bone folder and give that a good crease. All right. Halfway done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding all right so we've got a piece of designer series paper this is four inches by three and we're going to layer it on a basic white that is four and a quarter by three and one quarter so let's go ahead and adhere these together looks like the camera i shouldn't speak but right now the camera looks to be behaving hopefully hopefully what i did will 
fix the problem. All right. So I'm just going to adhere that down with my stamp and seal. Now I'm a stamp and seal gal. If you like um, liquid glue, use liquid glue, right? I also like lots of dimension, although I'm not going to go too crazy today, but I'm going to put dimensionals. I'm going to pop up this layer. If you want it flat, put it flat. That is fine as well, right? Each person gets to do their own thing, which is one of my things I love about paper crafting. So if you guys played with this set yet, let me know. Let me know in the comments. All right, so that is on our project front here. Next, I want to go ahead and stamp the airplane image and I'm gonna use Night of Navy ink and this large airplane. Now, this is a what I would call a line image stamp set, right? Um, and at first, when you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that stamp set because of all the coloring, right? Well, today, part of what we're going to do is show you that you don't have to color a lot. You could do no coloring or you can do a little coloring. So I'm actually going to do my coloring with my Wink of Stella. So I'm pulling in my Wink of Stella glitter brush. This is back in stock, by the way. Uh, and I'm going to pull out my silicone craft sheet. You can see I've got a little bit of, maybe you can see that, Wink of Stella already on it. So anytime I'm using Wink of Stella, I try to make sure I'm priming it over the top of this little silicone mat so I don't waste it, right? So I'm going to kind of use this as a paintbrush. So since I stamped this with classic ink, it is going to, um, any moisture will smear the ink a little bit. Um, so I am going to use my Wink of Stella and where I've got this blue, isn't this great already? It's already doing it. So where I've got this blue stamped, I can literally just swipe Wink of Stella. Get this juicy again. There we go. Um, I can just swipe Wink of Stella on it and it's going to add color. Oh, I've got a little heavy on my Stella. This is a brand new Wink of Stella. So sometimes they get a little crazy when they're first new. And this is another good reason to have your silicone craft sheet nice and handy, right? So what a great way to add not only some shimmer, but to get a touch of color without actually coloring, right? I think it's a great way to go about it. All right, so then we are going to die cut this with the coordinating die right out of our stamp set, which is this one right here. And we'll run that through with the die cutting machine, right? So I've already done that. I have one handy dandy ready for us. I also got quite a bit of Stella on the nose of that little guy, but that's okay, right? It all works. And let's pop this up with some dimensionals as well. Oh. That camera, oh, now it's going to go wide angle. So you can see all my messy desk, <laughs> a little behind the scenes at the same time, right? As we go through here. All right, so putting some dimensionals on. Again, if you don't want to put this much height, you don't have to do it. It's entirely up to you. Now, I like to cross my layers. I like things to hang off the edge. I just need to make sure I'm inside my card base itself but I love being able to have something crossover like that. Kind of fun, right? All right, next, let's pull out my favorite dies. My absolute favorite dies are my stylus shapes. And we die cut a banner right out of our stylus shapes out of basic white. And then I've got a little bit of the uh, banner from the Adventurous Sky as well, using this die here to cut out that little banner shape. Let's go ahead and grab our sentiment. Hopefully I grabbed it. I'm gonna make this a birthday card. So let's grab our Night of Navy ink. Again, perfect. And we're just gonna stamp right on this banner. Now, hopefully I get it straight. Sometimes I don't do so well um, because I can't see where I'm stamping on camera. So, and I don't have a backup. Oh, I did okay, yay. <laughs> could have been bad could have been bad you just never know what's going to happen when you're on camera right all right so let's go ahead and adhere this together so I want this to have the banner end I'm going to cover up the point and I'm going to offset it so it just sticks out a little bit but I do want this to be popped up so I'm going to make sure I'm in camera here add some dimensionals to my banner itself Okay, 
I'm going to lay this right over the top of this die cut so that I've got, you know, what I want peeking out. Now that's covering my adhesive. So I need a little bit of liquid glue. You could use stamp and seal, but I think because of the height that I've already got popped up, I'm going to use liquid glue and see if I can carefully pick this up. Now, I like it hanging off the edge, right? We talked about that. I like my layers to cross, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down with this little bit hanging off the edge. Are you loving it? Fast and easy, right? Let's pull in some gems. And I am using the Neutrals sequins. So they have four different colors in them, and I'm gonna use the gold ones, right? I got, I got little bits cut everywhere. So let's pull out some gold sequins and we'll pull out, we'll just sprinkle on a couple. There's a big one there, if I can get a hold of it. I don't have enough putty on the end, I don't think. There we go. Grab one there and grab one there. Nice. So now we've got a little bit of bling on the front there. Let's go ahead and add a layer to the inside. Now, a lot of times I will do, I will decorate the inside. I'm gonna leave this one blank. I'm just gonna put in a white layer. Oh no, maybe we should change it. I don't have, I didn't put anything in the original, but let me, um, let me go ahead and stamp this airplane again. Why not? Let's just bring it in and stamp it again. I like the idea of that. So I'm just gonna get my navy ink. And of course, we could use our Stella and color this. I'm just gonna have it down in the corner here. Just adding a little bit of that design to the inside. I think it makes a huge difference uh, bringing, bringing, when you bring your design to the inside, right? It's kind of fun, a little festive there. And I brought in a scrap paper versus stamping right on my glass mat, which I could totally do. But I just realized my chamois that I prepped for this event is sitting in the bathroom in a sink full of water. <laughs> so we will not go grab that. We'll leave this alone for now. Perfect, so we're just gonna slide that in. Now, if you wanted to add the color here as well, you totally could take your Stella and quickly blend this just to give it a touch of color and shimmer. You know, that's the cool part is I'm not adding any color. I'm blending my color and I'm adding shimmer, which is great. So there's the out inside and the outside. What do you guys think of the first one? Super cute? Let me know. Let me know if you like it. All right, let's move on to the second card. Let me grab my supplies. Okay, so for our next one, we are also going to use a five and a half by eight and a half inch Thick basic white. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are liking it. Yay. Yeah, these are really fast and easy. So you could make stacks of these and have them on hand. Um, and if you wanted to leave sentiments off so that you add a sentiment when you need it, you could definitely do that as well. All right. So five and a half by eight and a half thick basic white cardstock. We're just going to fold this bad boy in half, just like we did on the first one. I'm doing a top fold card again. All right. And then I want to layer on a piece of five and a quarter by four Knight of Navy cardstock. Now, sometimes I will cut holes out of the center of my cardstock, especially when I'm building up my layers to save a little bit of paper. But I decided not to worry about it this time, especially since I'm putting a white layer over the top and I did not want to risk having that show through. So next, I am using this amazing new... Don't you love this size of this? It is a full size embossing folder. So, so swirly and it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. It adds so much depth and texture and you can use either side, right? Depending on how you want your swirl to be, um, to put this down. So it, it's, it, I love that it's huge, right? So it covers your whole die plate, which is fantastic. So it is, I wasn't going to get it. It was not on my list of things that I wanted, but I've ended up purchasing it and I really do love it. Ah, uh, okay. See, I told you this was going to happen. So we'll check this one. I think I've got one swipe in a second one that I have here as well. Don't think, does that happen to you? I have multiples going at all times. And of course they all run out at the same time. 
Perfect. So yeah, so I'm going to put a focal point on this. I didn't even bring in the card. Let's bring in the card. So I'm putting a focal point. So I could have cut out a hole out of that navy, but sometimes when you have a darker cardstock under a white layer, you'll see it. So I just didn't want to take the risk. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, next we've got a piece of a uh, three by three inch piece of Knight of Navy cardstock, and I'm going to lay this down. And again, I'm just using stamp and seal. And if you wanted to pop this up, you totally could. I'm, I'm being good today. I'm not going too crazy with my layers. I'm making these very mailable cards, right? All right. And now I've got a strip of four inches by two inches of the designer series paper. You could use whatever side you wanted. I'm going to use this and place this across here. Now, if you didn't, if you only had scraps left, you could do what I call cheater strips. So you could do little one inch strips instead so that you're not wasting anything in the middle here. So that would also save you a little bit of paper or let it go, let, let you go a little further with it. So I'm taking the easy way and I am just using the full strip. And of course, four by two, when it's cut four by two, you get 100% use out of that sheet of paper. So yay. All right, I'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on this cool image here and how we did that. So I have a two and three quarter by two and three quarter piece of basic weight. I'm going to bring in the small plane and my Knight of Navy ink again. Oh, you know what? Before I stamp the plane, let's stamp the sentiment. Because if I mess this up, I want to be able to flip it over and I don't want to have all the rest of it done. Okay, so we've got this and we're going to lay this out and I want this towards the bottom. Hopefully it's somewhat centered and somewhat straight. Not bad, I'll take it. I find as I age, the red rubber is harder to use for sentiments for me. I don't know about you guys, but I have a little trouble with it. All right, so we're inking up the small plane in our native navy and I'm going to come over to the left of the layer. Let's see if I can make sure I'm in camera here. Left side of my layer and I'm going to stamp. Now I'm going to lift and slightly move it to the right. So I'm moving it this way and without re-inking, I'm going to stamp it again. And I'm going to repeat one more time and stamp it again. So it kind of looks like, makes it look like that plane is flying through the sky. So it gives your image a little bit of movement, which is, I think, super cool. So let's bring back in our Wink of Stella. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the first one, where we're just going to blend some of that ink on this front plane, right? Give it a little bit of color, a little bit of definition without really coloring, right? We're doing cheater coloring and adding fantastic sparkle, which is always nice. Now, if this is really difficult for you to see and you're like, I can't even find where the first plane is, stamp the plane first, color, and then you could always stamp the other images as well. Okay, so lots of, lots of ways to go about it. All right, I think that's cool. I hope you guys like that. Let's go ahead and layer this. And of course, I need to pop something up on the front. So let's pop this up. And on my original, I was a little saggy in the middle because I only used the four corners. So I am gonna go to, I'm using six dimensionals. Maybe I should use more, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna use six. It was really just the middle for whatever reason. It might've been, I had it in a book or in a stack and it got smushed, I don't know. But that tells me that in the mail, it might get a little smushed too. So we will put this right in the middle of that. And I really like the designer paper between those layers versus underneath it all, right? It really kind of changes the look of it up a little bit. Uh, gives you a little more interest. All right, let's bring in our sequins again. And this time I'm gonna use these white ones. I'm just gonna put two on here. Put one there and one, whoops, little dog hair. We have two golden doodles. They're boys, Ozzy and Oakley. So you may end up hearing them. They are in my room uh, right now because they had their uh, little sniffing surgery this week. And so they're a little bit pitiful and I'm trying to keep them quiet. So it's been interesting, <laughs> right? Now, I did not do anything on my original 
in the inside, but let's 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 do. Let's change this up. Let's take our small plane and let's bring our design to the inside. Why not? We did it on the first one. Let's do it on this one as well. Grab my scrap paper. I am, yeah, I'm just doing it. Now you could put sentiments on the inside as well. I've kept these really generic. So you could do the full plane. And if you want to repeat the same stamping off for movement, you totally could do that, right? And then we can add that little bit of Wink Estella as well. I think I will. I think I'll add that little bit of Wink Estella just to that front plane. I'm so glad Wink Estella is back in stock. It was out of stock, uh, let's say I placed an order earlier this week and I had it in my cart and it fell out because it was out of stock again. But today it's back in stock. So if you need Wink Estella, don't buy it all because I need some. But it is available again. Yay. All right, so then that's on the inside. So this is great because you're the best plain and simple. You can use that for so many occasions, right? And then add another sentiment on the inside if you need to. All right, two down. We are halfway done already. Can you believe it? It's crazy. All right, our third project is this one right here. Flying by to say hi. So let me grab that. Those little supplies here. All right. So again, we are starting off with a five, uh, five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of native navy cardstock. And I'm going to fold this in half. Again, we're going to do a top fold. The last one we're changing up. It's still a top fold, but I'm changing the orientation. All right. Now, I have got a piece of copper clay that is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I've added texture with the Painted Textures 3D Embossing Folder. For whatever reason, this folder I go to when I have anything related to the sky, because for some reason, I feel like it looks a little bit like the sky. Does it? I don't know, what do you guys think? Am I crazy? Maybe. Oh, just ran out. Okay, so now we're gonna change this. I have a refill. Isn't it crazy that we throw away the bulk of it and that this is all we keep? Is this little outer shell here? I go through a lot, a lot of stamp and seal. So I always have plenty on hand. So we get it out of the bag. Now, why this is a resealable bag? Somebody tell me, why would you put it back in here? I don't know. I feel like we could save a little on packaging. All right, so you've got the two nubs. You got two holes, put that in, and then snap it together, and you're good to go, right? All good to go. Now, because I'm a stamp and seal kind of gal, sometimes the seal won't run. And so this is where I always keep my silicone craft sheet handy, because if you run it across your silicone craft sheet, it will it will revive it, right? Like, you don't have to mess with it. It's, it's wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. If it happens, I'll show you, right? doesn't always happen when I'm crafting, but it does often. Okay, so now I've got a strip of designer paper. This is five and a quarter by one and a half. And I'm layering it just straight across the center. So I got this first layer on Cricut. I hope that's okay. Some people don't like Cricut layers, but I think it adds movement. So since I'm dealing with airplanes, why not, right? Okay, let's bring in our white layer. We have got a white layer that measures four inches by three. And I'm gonna stamp that large plane on there in my Knight of Navy ink. We're keeping things simple here, remember? I'm gonna ink this up. And I want it at a little bit of an angle and I'm gonna put it up in the, a little bit towards the upper of the uh, layer here. And then I want to bring in my sentiment flying by to say hi. And hopefully I can get this somewhat straight so that we don't have to restamp this, right? Yay! Love when it works out. All right, so let's change it up a little bit. We are still going to use our Wink of Stella as our tool of choice for coloring. 
But this time I'm bringing in copper clay and we're gonna add a little touch of color. So to get the color in the lid, I just squeeze on the lid. And then when I open it up, I've got a little bit of an inky mess there, which is okay. You can wipe that out if it bothers you. Um, you could also use a marker, not a stamp and blend, but a regular stamp and write marker and color on your clear block or on a piece of acetate or a plastic container to get ink for your palette as well. You could color right on your glass mat if you have a glass mat. So I'm picking up a little bit color, just like I would if I was using like a blender pen or a water painter with my Wink of Stella. And I am gonna add a touch of copper clay right onto my airplane here. So I hope and see my blue is going to is going to blend in there a little bit as well right cuz we were adding some moisture and that doesn't bother me if that bothers you you might not want to do this but i think it's super cool right so just add a touch of color and then color in the whole plane just a touch i want the essence of this is a brown plane or copper clay. It's brown, right? It's an orangey brown in my mind. Put some on the this part of the plane as well. Maybe the center of the tire part. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm going to wipe off the tip of my Stella to get rid of the copper clay ink that's still on it. Okay. Now I want to blend a little bit of the blue too. So this is why I got rid of my copper clay. And so now I'm gonna come in and just swipe in. And it's gonna blend that blue ink just a bit and give it a little bit of the blue color as well. You might get a little of the copper clay in there too. I think that's okay, right? Very pretty, love it. Oops, here I tried to put my take your pick I take your pick tool on my Stella. That does not work. Does not work at all. All right, so let's pop this layer up just because I like it. I like it popped up. I find where I've hidden my dimensionals. Oh good, you guys are liking this, yay! I'm so glad, right? Great to use Wink of Stella for stuff like this. I love, you know, I was already a huge fan of Wink of Stella, but this coloring with Wink Estella is one of my favorites. All right, so we've got this layer and we are popping it right on to our card front. Now, you can make it straight. Mine is not straight, it's slightly crooked and I did that intentionally. If that drives you nuts, make it straight, it's okay. All right, let's bring back in our neutral sequence. And I've also cut, unless I've lost it, which I might have, I might have lost it already. Let's see if I have. Hmm, I might have. I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is, right in front of my face. Oh, good grief. All right, so this die set also will cut out fun propellers, and you get two at one whack, which is great. I love it when you can get more at the same time. So I'm going to put a small dot of liquid glue right there. Now, if you don't want that to ooze and make a mess, you could let that sit for a moment. Uh, I'm going all in. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know that some of you may be at work and taking a lunch break with me. I love that. Or a morning break or an evening break, depending on what time of day it is for you. Um, so I'm trying to be a little bit uh, cautious with that so that I don't take up too much of your time. So I'm not going to let it sit very, very long. So Put that down and then you could choose. Do you want a big or a little? So you got the little sequin or the big sequin. I think they both look fantastic. Let's see what I put on. It looks like I put a little one on the first one. So let's put a big one and then we can compare them. Good, I'm glad you're liking the projects, Tony. And hopefully if you guys have questions, let me know. All right, so what do you think? Big or little sequin? I think they're both fabulous. I like them both. Okay, so here again, I added a white layer, but I didn't add anything to the white layer. So what should we do on this one to change it up 
just a bit. On the others, we've brought our design to the inside with our stamping of our plane. So we could do the same thing here. So let's see, let's bring this in. Let's pull in, you know what? I'm gonna pull in the small plane on this and do the same coloring technique, right? Instead of the big one, just changing it up a little bit. I'm gonna stamp that in the navy and I'm gonna have it off the side. Okay, why not? Why not do it? And then let's add, I'm gonna go ahead and color my blue part with the Wink Estella. Okay, nice. And then let's add a touch of the copper clay as well. Why not? Because we can. Paint palette. We'll just add a little bit of copper clay to that. It might not have been totally in the lines, but that's okay. I just wanted a smidge of color. Nice. I'm going to go with that. I'm wiping off the tip of my Wink Estella on a scrap paper. That way I don't transfer that ink where I don't want it. Okay. And we'll add this to our card inside. We only have one left. Oh no. Oh no. Perfect. So I did mention that the all-star video class tutorial bundle uh, is our featured Bundle for Joan. So that is the bundle that you would get when you spend $50 or more with me uh, to be able to get that for 12 additional ideas using this fantastic stamp and die bundle. All right, last but not least is this one here. I also have a couple other programs that you might be interested in. I have um, Cultivated Creativity, which is my DIY paper crafting kit. I also have um, Forget-Me-Not. So if you are looking for something a little more advanced, you like fun folds and techniques, uh, that might be the choice for you. Cultivated Creativity focuses on a stamp die bundle, just like we're doing today here. Forget-Me-Not is everything under the kitchen sink. It is anything I can find in my craft room. I mix and match. I use all kinds of crazy products. But it is, I think it, they're both good. They both have different uh, different reasons to join. But if you've got questions, let me know. I do have posts in the group, or if they're not in the group already, they'll be in the next couple of days. So, all right, thick white card base. So this one, I changed it up a little bit. Four and a quarter by 11, still a top fold, but I've done, instead of a landscape, I'm doing a vertical orientation. Is that right? Portrait versus vertical? Landscape, portrait. There we go. Landscape, portrait, horizontal, vertical. <laughs> I'm so confused. Uh, too funny. All right. So we are bringing in a piece of boho blue. This is three and three quarters by five inches. And I use that wonderful swirl again because it's just fantastic. I just love it. So we're going to go and put this down. There's stamp and seal. And I'm gonna angle it again. We're gonna go crazy. We're not gonna do straight layers, we're angling it. Okay. And then I got a three by four piece of designer series paper. Again, we're doing sizes that allow us to get 100% usage out of our paper so that we can make all the cards potentially possible, right? With no waste. And I'm gonna angle this off the other direction. Okay, nice, I like that. Now I've got a strip of copper clay, which measures four inches by one inch. And we are going to um, go ahead and put that down. I'm just using stamp and seal on all these layers so far. Just making it flat, easy to mail. And I'm centering this left to right. You can put it up as high or as low as you want to. Maybe I'll go up a little bit higher than I did on the other one. See what it looks like, right? 
So that layer is down. Now I've got a circle that I cut out with my two inch circle punch. Um, if I need to show that, let me know. Actually, maybe I should grab a scrap and get it. Let me do that. Just in case we've got some friends with us today that aren't familiar with all of our fun, amazing products. So our punches come flat, right? They store flat on the shelf. There's a picture on the end. There's a picture on the top and they're locked. So if you slide that, it releases and opens it up. This is the part you squeeze. This is where your paper goes in, right? So you just slide your cardstock in and I like to use it. I'll use my scrap. Slide your cardstock in, and I like to do it upside down because if I had a stamped image here, um, or you know, I was trying to place it in the corner or whatever, I could do that. And then, or you could do it this way, but I like to be able to see what I'm punching out. And you have two choices. You can either hold it in the air and squeeze, or you can lay it on your table and really just lean into it. Now, this is not cutting great because this is computer paper, right? My scrap is computer paper. It cuts cardstock fantastic. It does not cut computer paper that well, or at least in my opinion, it doesn't cut computer paper that well. Um, if you had multiple layers, it would do better, right? It needs something with a little bit of oomph to it. So when you're done, you just squeeze and lock and it's ready to put away. Easy peasy. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. So let's go ahead and get our circle on the front here. And I'm going to use liquid glue. I know. So if you know me well, you know that I have a love-hate relationship with liquid glue. I don't use liquid glue unless I have to use liquid glue for something um, because it I don't like getting sticky. And I almost always end up sticky when I use liquid glue. So see, I'm already sticky. Um, not intentionally, but I am. So I try not to use it unless I have to use it or it makes sense to use it. All right. We have cut another one of these fun banners from the Adventure Sky dies. And then I'm pulling in this lovely set. This is the Spotlight on Nature's dies. So this is actually part of a bundle with another stamp set that's actually very, very pretty. It's got, um, I think it's butterflies and flowers in it. They're very sketched, looking like, like sketched out, not sketchy, but sketched out. Um, and it is a very, very pretty set. I've seen some beautiful things done with it. Um, I actually chose not to purchase it, but I bring it up because the die and stamps bundled are part of the sale, which is amazing. So I love that there's three different designs. I call this the radiating, and then this is the detail, and then this is the stitched or the dashed. So we're using the second smallest dashed. That's the smallest. That's the second smallest. So I've already done that. Yeah. Yeah. Getting sticky, the fun of crafting, you love your green glue. Oh, good, 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 good. Like them without the dyes. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to use dyes. I I love dyes. I love dyes. It's, it's my go-to. Granted, I love punches as well. But, you know, you can't beat a good dye. And I love that our dyes add fun texture and, you know, the, the interest, the extra, right? Like, I don't have a punch that'll give me this cool decorative edge. And I like the cool decorative edge, right? Okay, so let's stamp our sentiment on this. So the nice thing about a circle is it doesn't matter if you're crooked on your sentiment because it's still inside of a circle, right? The only thing you have to watch is catching that edge. Woo, I could have made a mess. I usually look at my stamp before I stamp it down, but I haven't been lately. And you know what? I've been getting lucky because it is super easy to catch an edge. All right, so I have my lovely circle here. And um, this is going to go on here, but I wanted the banner, but the banner's kind of big, like it's kind of long, I thought. So what I've done is I'm going to clip it. Let me find my scissors. Get my little paper snips here, and I'm going to clip this in half. Done. Done. Okay. So now I can put some adhesive on the back. Um, let's use liquid glue since it's a circle. This might put me over the edge. I would normally use stamp and seal at this point, but that's okay. We'll do this. We'll see how it goes. And then I can put my arrow out. Yeah, I'm totally going to get sticky. I can put my arrow on here and I can have it stick out as much or as little as I want to, right? And then same thing, the other end, I can slide this in here and same thing. I can have it stick out as much or as little as I want to. 
to create my own custom length on my arrow here. Now, I wanna make sure this is straight. I'm gonna kind of use my um, glass mat as a guide here. And of course, since I chose to use liquid glue, it's gonna stay damp for a little bit. And of course, I've got liquid glue that probably just went down on my glass mat, which is fine, it'll wipe off. No worries there. And you know what? I want to pop this up. So I really didn't need to do the circle of glue. I could have totally just done a little line, but I wasn't thinking, right? I was I was so like grossed out about the idea of putting liquid glue on there that I wasn't thinking. Oh, well. okay. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals on here. And since I know, normally I would wait and let that dry um, before I started messing with it so that my placement wouldn't move. But in effort to uh, conserve our time here together, I am just pushing it down and putting dimensionals right on there. And I'm gonna pop this up right on this circle here. Cute, 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 cute. All right, and then let's bring in our sequence. We're gonna use the coppery ones this time. And let's start with a center one. And like the arrows pointing right where I need to put my sequence, right? So I got a big one and then let's straddle with two smaller ones. And you can put them as close or as far apart as you want. Just a little series of three, kind of fun. I like it. Do you guys like it? Yay. Now, again, I didn't do anything on the inside of the original. You could add a layer um, but again, I wanted these to be fast, easy, super, super simple, right? Now, you could stamp on the inside if you want to. I think I'm going to leave this one blank. Um, I may add some designer paper later, right? Like a little strip of designer paper, um, you know. Oh, without using the airplane dice, you like the circles. Yeah, I, yeah, totally. You don't even need the airplane. You could totally make this card only if you wanted to. I just really liked the airplanes, right? I thought that they added a nice touch. You know, so we've got this one. We've got this one, right? Do you guys have a favorite? And then there's this one. I love the movement on that one. And then we've got this one. Fun. And you could add the propeller, just like we did on this one. You could totally add the propeller to that. But again, trying to keep it easy. Yeah? Oh, good. You guys like it? Yay! Okay. So when you make your projects, share them here in our online workshop. I've got a post uh, that is scheduled to go out on Saturday reminding you to share your projects that you make. You know, you might change up the designer paper. You might use a totally different product and not even use this stamp set and these this paper. Right, you could take this same idea and use completely different things uh, and make this set of projects, right? Number two is your favorite, but you like them all. Okay, great, great. Oh, good, good. I really appreciate you all joining me today. Um, and again, don't forget about the order special and uh, I, I'd love to be sending you packets in the mail so you can uh, create these as well. All right, thanks so much. And I hope to see you guys again soon for another online workshop. All right. Bye for now.